in a popular dogging spot. I yeah. <laughs> in North Wales, and uh, after you've had a bit of a tamper, then you want to get changed outdoors. So we invented all series of products for that on that mountain biking. Right, good morning pin fans. Today I've come to North Wales' Landegler Trail Centre, lots of you know about. This is for their event called the MTB Meetup. We'll check out Cy right now as the organiser and he'll tell us all about it. But as you can see behind us, next to Buicor, they sponsor our live show. We are situated, got the van, got all the uh, flags, got some stickers in there and the bike's on display. We'll be going out for a ride later on. But first of all, I want to show you what's here and we've got all sorts of products and bits and pieces that I think you might be interested in. Right, so caught up with Cy Bradley, who's the organiser of the Meetup event. Cy, tell us all about this. Hiya Jim, welcome to uh, Mountain Bike Meetup 20, 2019. Um, so basically, this has all started from a couple of us chatting away on Twitter. Um, we've decided to meet up for a ride. This, was, this is the sixth year now, so uh, we're, uh, we're getting bigger and bigger. We had 40 guys the first year. Uh, we met up with Cody Brenner, a very, very wet day. Uh, then we moved over to Landegler, a bit more space, and yeah. uh, we invited a few brands along. Um, and uh, basically, it's grown and grown from there. Last year, we had about 1,500 people. This year, we're hoping we'll get something similar. It's really busy this morning, so everyone's having a good time. Sun's trying to shine, so uh, <laughs> fingers crossed it stays like this. So what's the idea behind it? Is this, is this brands that specifically will sell their wares at Landegler? No, or not necessarily. No, not at all. We friends train. of yours, or no. how does it work? We, we have some are friends, some are contacts that I've met online, some are people yeah. that I know. What we try and do, we've got everything from, you know, as you can see, we've got Pace, we've got Buico, we've got uh, some big guys like Transition and Stanton Bikes. Yeah. Um, they're here doing demos. Um, but we've also got smaller guys like your Vinyl Bears, your Broken Riders, um, yeah. Rad 8 Mountain Bike Glasses. They've come along. So we try and give it a bit of a mix. We try and get a lot of different things. So we're, we're trying to basically at the end of the day the brands are, are like an extra bonus for us what the whole re ethos of the meetup is to get together with guys you meet online or guys yeah you know, that sounds a bit dodgy actually doesn't it <laughs> don't get together with guys you meet online that is not good get to, but you, you know you spend all day hey, chatting to people on twitter about. yeah <laughs> but you, you spend all day on twitter chatting to yeah. people and you know them, but you never get to ride with them because they're mm. all dotted all over the country so we're basically um giving people an excuse to get together we're given a, a, a location and we give a date and then we leave the rest of, to everyone else we try and keep it off schedule we don't sort of pressure people into riding as much it's not a race um, anything like that we basically say come along ride as much or as little as you want um, but just come along and have a bit of fun and Brilliant. it's an opportunity for, for say for me for example to meet up with somebody that I've chatted to online that might have similar you know things but we wouldn't normally bump into in, re in real life I'm gonna have a wander around and see what's about brilliant thanks Cheers, very much mate. for coming Jim Thank thanks for TV we call how are you doing, Julian? Doing all right? all right, Jim. Nice to see you, mate. Nice to see you again, mate. For those of you who don't know, Buicor, um, I've worked with Buicor for a bit now and they sponsor our live show on YouTube once a month, which we very much appreciate. Yeah, you're welcome, mate. Um, Watch it, it's a superb show. <laughs> thank you very much. Tell us about some of your products and what you sell and that kind well, of thing. We're in a popular dogging spot. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in North Wales and uh, after you've had a bit of a tamper then you want to get changed outdoors so we invented all series of products for on that mountain biking. I think if you're into that you don't need to worry about getting changed and covering your bits up because well, that's the whole idea bit, is that they want to look. They're a bit shy in car park <laughs> some people, there's a few around and uh, yeah, you want to get changed outside that's us. So you've got, the, you got the changing robe, what do you call it? Uh, pretty much a changing Whenever robe, I'm on it. the live show, I never know quite what to call no, it. No, neither do I. I call it a towel that you wear Gen with a hood. What else do you sell? T-shirts, caps, bags? T-shirts, caps, changing mat. That's yeah. a real popular one. Do you it's want to explain about the changing mat? All of this, without gags, all of this <laughs> is just pouring out of stuff that yeah. we've needed. Yeah. Ruining the wife's towels, and yeah. along comes the changing towel, I guess you could call it. Yeah. Giant hoodie get changed under it get changed anywhere without exposing yourself like you're up to no good yeah <laughs> and same with the changing mat you need that stun on the floor i mean just like now it's gone dry for a moment which yeah. is really here, but yeah you've got these changing bags that you basically stand in don't you yes get all your yeah. horrible Turn, kit off yep pull it up yes pull the thing each. same with it the old dirt bag um which is you put your cleaner stuff in you can haul as much stuff as you want in there again it's just something you need 
from I guess popular using um, furniture store bags yeah then uh, which yeah good solution but it's not ideal so well, I've, got game, to, I've, the dirt bag. I've got to get one of these dirt bag t-shirts off you today bad, sure, I like that that explains me a lot um, you get away with a lot with, you know, you've got yeah. dirt bag written on your chest you know what were you expecting right we're here with David from Pace the long wait is over <laughs> everyone's been getting a bit excited about this your um, it's you class it as a trail bike with enduro capabilities is that right yeah sounds about right I would say yeah yeah, uh, full long, carbon, uh, full carbon fiber. Yeah. Yeah. But what are we looking at with this bike then? On um, reach of uh, a large. This is a large. Just yeah. the only one available, uh, sort of coming soon. We're looking at about, oh, I think it's about four eight three for a large. Yeah. Okay. It's quite a long sort of reach. Modern numbers then. Modern numbers, long, low, yeah. slack, you know, that kind and, of thing. Uh, head angle. Sixty four and a half. Oh right. It's so pretty slack, especially for slack. a twenty nine er. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're very modern. And then on the back end, what we're we looking at for length of the chain stays? Uh, it's super short. Uh, cut, four cut three this. six for a large. Four three six. Four three six for a large. Wow, that is short. So, so it's short. Very short at the back, long at the front. Slack head angle. Slack long, playful then, really. Yeah, playful yeah. and nimble, that kind of thing. When are they going to be available? So we will be placing orders and getting pre-orders in September. Yeah. So only about another month to sort of work. Yeah. We're just sort of finishing off with the sort of tooling and stuff like that at the moment. Everything's finished. You know, he's ridden the prototype, got everything sorted. Yeah. Come September, we'll be placing orders for customers and getting uh, them brought to us. How many different versions have been through the pipeline while you've been developing this bike? <laughs> well, Adrian likes to get everything perfect, so yeah, he likes to yeah. likes to ride it as much as he can. We've been all, he's been all over. He's ridden it in America. He's ridden it in France. He's ridden it every terrain you can possibly think of, basically, until he's got it exactly where he wants it to be. And how long since the idea came along and you thought, right, we're going to do an enduro bike till it was, you had a rideable version? Ooh, quite a long time, I would say. Yeah, yeah. It's, not a, it's not a quick process. No, it? it's been something that he's been working on for a while, but like I say, he likes to get things right. So he, I mean, he's already working on a 150 version of this one. So yeah, he's already yeah. looking for the future and that kind of thing. Well, I remember back in the 90s when I used to have your, was it RC35 forks? Yeah. Which are on this bike behind. Oh, no, they're the downhill ones. <laughs> they're the downhill ones. And, you know, everybody wanted those forks. And then, obviously, this bike when the uh, lad, was it Thackeray, rode for you? Sounds about right. Yeah. So, I think this is a pretty much an exciting bike. And Definitely I look so. forward first, to seeing it out on the trails. It'll be the first full suspension that we've done since bikes kind of moved to this kind yeah, of 27R, yeah. 29er. The last one you were looking at was um, 26 inch wheel, so it's a big step forward for yeah. us. Uh, exciting time. Very exciting time. Thank you very much. Right, we're here with Tom from Sonder Bikes, is that correct? That is indeed. Uh, tell us about your brand, tell us all about it. So we are here with, yeah, Sonder. We're here uh, launching the Cortex. Uh, we're a brand that's off the back of a company called Alpkit, so outdoor gear, um, adventure type bikes, but we're here launching the Cortex, which is our new 29er full sus, mid travel, 130, 120 yeah. rear, uh, cracking bike, it's got a few demos going out, so yeah, should hopefully be um, a good day. What are, we, what are we talking with this bike on? Numbers, ge ge geometry? Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's a 29er, uh, yeah. we've got We've got the Cane Creek model here, which is a really yeah. nice sort of finished kit. Uh, it's a 130mm travel at the front here, 120mm rear. Yeah. Um, best of both worlds, really. I mean, it's a nice do it all bike. So that's like 66, 60, 60, 60, 60 degree head angle? I think it's like a 66 degree It looks like trail yeah, bike is. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Like I say, it's a bit of best of both worlds of doing okay. it all, really. So, Whereabouts yeah. are you lot based? We are based in yeah, Nottingham. Like, yeah. Alpha yeah. is a company yeah. sort of based yeah. down. Um, got a few stores though so yeah Alpkit I should have said more your question yeah. there was what's the brand that's all right like, get so it in now don't so matter Sonda is the uh, the bike brand but Alpkit is the kind of parent company yeah do a lot of nice outdoor gear got a few stores uh, one in the Peak District Hathersage and then a couple up in the Lake District yeah one soon to be opening in the northeast as well so that'll be on the horizon so a few stores but yeah Sonda in itself is, is the bike brand that we've what's got. what's this model coming in at 
Uh, so starting builds, we've got coming in at about 1600. Yeah. So that'll be with a recon fork and a, the, N uh, the SX build with a new SX group set that's come out. So uh, a good starting price point, but then upwards from that. So this this model that we've got here with the Cane Creek and the, the GX, yeah. I think is at 26. Okay. So pretty reasonably priced point um, for a bike that will do everything. And what about the tie hardtail? What's that? Ah, uh, you, you've that, got that's your a eye sexy, on that, haven't you? Sexy yeah, looking get, bike. Get that a bit is. of that in the shot. So the Signal, um, yeah, we've got we've got a full range of sort of different tie bikes. So yeah. The Signal, which is a really good fun play bike. We've also got the Broken Road, which yeah. is a nice sort of uh, bit of a do it all hardtail bike as well. Any kind of wheel size you want. Uh, price points on that, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I think you could get frames starting from about a thousand pounds. Yeah, okay. Um, and we've got we've got options as well for custom geometry, something we're open to as well. Yeah. Any sort of custom sort of fittings you want, changing head angles, yeah. things like that. Talking with the product manager we can get we can get that sort for you with a okay perfect. Sort of so Hope are here sporting the carbon bikes. I was hoping they'd have the 29er but that is next week at Ardrock. But They've got their um, 650s here and check them out, it's such beautiful bikes. Hey, we're here with Steve from Rad 8, uh, these sunglasses or riding glasses, do you want to tell us a little bit about them? Um, hi, uh, yeah, Rad 8 started about three or four years ago. Uh, yeah. I'm a keen mountain biker so I was looking for something that would uh, stay clear and help me ride around a lot more. So we started the brand three or four years ago. Um, we now do three or four styles, mainly full framed and really aimed at mountain bikers. So yeah. the key things are they stay clear when you're riding because there's a good anti-fog coating yeah. and the photochromic means that you can go into trees and they'll clear up. What's the, what's the reaction time on them? Yeah, well, as with any photochromic, it's about 30 40 seconds, yeah. but it means you keep your glasses on rather than taking them off, so you protect your eyes and protect your vision. And what sort of prices are we talking with these? Normally, the uh, photochromic is about £89. Yeah. Um, today, we've got a special event price about 49 so if you catch us at an event, you get them pretty much half price. Tell us who you are and tell us about MSC Tires. Certainly, I'm Keith Lenster, I'm from MSC Tires, and uh, we are the distributor in the UK. Uh, the brand is quite new to the UK, started last year, yeah. and uh, we've got some prominent mountain bikers working on them at the moment. Yeah. Um, we've got Phil Pierce who rides for Hope Tech in the cross country scene. I've also got Mike Klein who's out doing his thing riding the EWS World Series. So it's quite, uh, it's good. So are we looking at an Enduro ready tyre, a thick casing, we've got the right weights, we've got the yeah, right grip? Absolutely. And um, the kind of tyre you'd be looking at for Enduro. Is our gripper model? Yeah. Um, this tire is coming out in six weeks in the new Extreme Shield, which will yeah. be right up there for Enduro and DH. Yeah. Um, Mike's currently using this model. This is the Super Shield, and he's sitting currently fourth place in the Men's Masters in the EWS. Wow. So, so he's a ripper. He's a flying machine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of our other big ambassadors who's been using them is a guy called Sean Green. Yeah. He does all the Scottish Munros, which are over three thousand feet. Uh, he's taken these up into big mountain country, and uh, he's run, been running the tires as well. And, if anyone's going to test them, uh, taking them out into that sort of terrain is going to do it. So what sizes are we looking at and what's your price point, weights, that kind yeah. of thing? Starting uh, for the Enduro tyre, that gripper, you'd be looking at a price point in the twin compound, uh, £39.99. Oh, so, so yeah, very reasonable really price. Reasonable. Wow. Yeah. That's like half the price of some tyres, isn't it? <laughs> it is indeed. Uh, we are cross country tyres, so if you're looking at uh, an XC performance tyre, you're looking at about £44.99 for yeah. our Epic Shield model. Yeah. Uh, our ruler in the Epic Shield. Uh, this one teamed up with our rock and roller. Yeah. Uh, we've currently just had three World Cup UCI victories in the XCO races, and that's um, in the under 23. So that's three wins in a row at World Cup level. Wow. So and those tyres are priced at 44.99, which is also a, really a bargain for the, the quality okay. you're getting. And what about widths on the more enduro style tyres? You going yeah. up? You doing two four, two six? Uh, our, our tires tend to come up a little bit larger than the, the size stated on the tire. Um, so what we're measuring is the carcass size. Yeah. So uh, the, because the tires have quite a rounded profile, it means the side knobs stick out a wee bit more, and that gives you a, actually a larger tread the tread size. So our 2.3 comes up around 2.5, and our 2.4 comes up closer to 2.65. Right. So okay. if you want a 2.6, our 2.4 is the tire to go for. We're here with Jeff from V Tire. Hey there. What have you got new to offer? Right, we have got here today yes. the new Snap WCE, yeah, which okay. has just been released. 
Yeah, so we've got a new tyre which is the, the for the rear specifically and a lot of the, the race teams have asked for it, especially the enduro riders and uh, it's been in development now for probably the last 12 months. We've yeah. talked about it and they've re-looked at the uh, different shapes of the knobs and they've finally come up with what they think will be the optimum uh, for grip and speed. So compounds, is it dual the, ply? Or yeah, so they, they've basically gone and gone done a, it's a dual compound, so the outer lugs are softer. Yeah. Uh, the centre is running about 50 sure hardness, so it'll keep it rolling yeah. quick enough, but also give it that durability under braking. And what about the, is it twin ply this one? Yeah, and it's, it'll come in two different types. It'll come in the gravity core, yeah. which will be technically a, it's almost like a dual ply with an insert in the side but also on the center another breaker yeah and then the enduro core will just be a stuck like a dual ply without the insert on the side to keep the weight down and what are we looking at widths on this tire at the minute uh 2.35 yeah uh, but rumored 2.5 2.6 as that's where everyone seems to be going yeah at the so i'm guessing you got no prices yet on the not uh, on the semi-slick one at the minute but obviously the normal wce is retailing around 60 pounds and and then the snap is around about 50 pounds. And are we looking at V bringing out any cores and for you know anti anti punch? Yeah, type I mean things? it's been spoke about, but I think the market at the minute is you know it's Flooded. pretty crowded. Flooded. Uh, everyone's got a system, and yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they're all pretty good. But I think we'll perhaps leave that to someone else. Right, we're with Tom from Broken Riders. How are you? Hi, right, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thank you. How's the brand going? Oh, really well. Yeah, last uh, 12 months uh, we've grown about 20 percent. Wow. So, more and more people are getting to know about Broken Riders and see more and more t-shirts being worn at events like this. Tell us about a bit about the background and a bit about what you're selling. Uh, well, it started in 2013 when I um, uh, broke my ankle uh, and I was laid up in hospital thinking, yeah. well, there's got to be more riders like me that just yeah. come off quite a lot. Yeah. And uh, I'm a graphic designer and so put the two together and I get a look, you know, you get t-shirt designs that are all about celebrating the fail falling off you know yeah, having a laugh yeah. about your mistakes uh, getting back on and have another go yeah so um so we do a range of lifestyle like mountain bike lifestyle stuff like t-shirts hoodies baseball caps socks yeah uh, they're all um, ethically sourced and they're all sustainable yeah so organic cotton and bamboo and stuff like that i'm a big believer in looking after the environment because it's our playground yeah, you know it's yeah. where we where we enjoy ourselves so Okay, brilliant. And what do your prices range from on t-shirts and hoodies and stuff like that? Uh, well, they're fairly reasonable, I think. So our t -shirt, cotton t-shirts, organic cotton, they're um, £25 yeah. and the bamboo are £27. Yeah. If you live in the UK, we do free standard shipping. Uh, if you live outside the UK, uh, we'll guarantee that you'll get tracked and signed so you can always track your, your shipment. So, you know, we okay. like to make sure people get their stuff when they've paid money for it. So we're here with Kyle who is actually one of the owners of Transition Bikes. I mean, how cool is that? I wasn't expecting anything like that. Um, how long here. are you in the UK? Uh, what, three days, I think? Yeah. So yeah, it's a pretty quick trip, you know? So, All in Wales though, so. Tell yeah. us what's happening with the bikes and then obviously you've got the Sentinel out there doing the rounds now. Yeah, we got the Sentinel. I, we, I think we have all the bikes represented here. We got the Scout, the Sentinel, Smuggler, and uh, the Patrol. Yeah. And uh, yeah. What's your biggest seller? Ah, that's a tough one. I think we go back and forth between a patrol and a sentinel. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of the the big, more aggressive, you know, bikes. That's kind of what people, what we're more known for. So we tend to do more of those. Would you say you guys were sort of some of the originators when it came to making a bike that sports the op that is specific for an offset for? I would say. I mean, you never know what actually goes on behind closed doors, but when we brought that to Fox and Rock Shocks, that was, um, it was something that Fox had experimented with yeah. internally, but hadn't really gotten any yeah. internal traction because nobody had come to them with it. So that was something that we kind of had played around with internally as well and done some custom um, fabricated stuff. And uh, yeah, it basically just came to them and it's like, hey, this is something we want to do. What do you think? And for them to do it, you know, as I understand it, for them to do it, you know, they have to make it, put it in the catalog and sell it to justify its super expensive tooling. So that's kind of how that went down. There was a number of brands that kind of came out. There's actually, I think, a couple of brands that beat us to market with product. Yeah. Um, and who knows the actual reality, but from my vantage point, they were in the catalog. These products were in the catalog before we actually even launched our bike right, that yeah. had these products wow. that we kind of instigated the development for. So. 
Yeah, I don't know. I'd like to think we were on the, the, the bleeding edge of that, though. So tell us about that first initial inquiry with, was it Fox you went to first or Rock Shocks? This is where you get lost in the details of history. I don't remember who was it, it was first. I because mean, at first they must have been like, what? Yeah, they were actually pretty open to it. Yeah. I mean, if you talk to, to the people in, you know, on the design and engineering and the things there, they're really keen on trying stuff, right? Yeah. And, and experimenting. I mean, this is, they have whole departments that that's what they're focused on. Yeah, it's like, let's yeah. just get in the weeds and try different stuff and and see what works. And, and they're doing a lot of crazy weird stuff and a lot of just normal stuff and back testing. And um, so I don't remember who it was, but when we approached them, it, it wasn't ever a conversation of like, that's not interesting or we think that there's no merit in that. It always was more about the economics of it, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, okay, well, industry is this, it's doing what it's doing and they just move lockstep like that. And so if we're gonna do something new, it's a huge investment and you know, we've gotta, they really wanted to kind of see it all coalesce to that or at least get enough traction to justify paying for the tooling for that. So that was always the bigger part of the conversation is like, yeah. okay, what are we talking about? Is this something that you just kind of want to do on a model as a thing, a special thing, or is this kind of like wholesale move yeah, for you guys? Yeah. Like you're gonna you know, full commit. And from our testing, our whole thing was we just feel like in 29 and 27, five, that just does work better across the board. We had an idea of how we want to implement that. So yeah, so and then it was just a matter of like, okay, well, what's the quantity gonna be? And, and for them to, to justify it, you know, they obviously Must had be to go so out and sell it. so difficult at that stage to, to just come up with a proper figure out the air, really. Yeah, and each of them wanted, you know, Fox and Rock Shocks, each of them wanted to do it differently. So they each yeah. had their, you know, they always historically have been a couple millimeters off on their, yeah. off, really on all their numbers, right? Axle to crowns and offsets. And so, you know, you kind of have to, you know, the concept was the concept and then you kind of had to realize there's going to be two different numbers. And so really we need to base our thing on sort of yeah, got the, the average of that. So. So what, uh, in order, if you know it, um, what are your best sellers? What's the, is Patrol your number one? I think that Patrol and Sentinel are probably a dead split time. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, okay. Yeah, and I think it kind of like, depending on which way the wind's blowing, one might creep ahead, just depending on like which one has the cooler color or the, I, I don't know, you know, but it, they're pretty dead even. Like yeah. We were just talking about that actually on this trip is like, what one is the most popular? I don't really know, but like I, I haven't checked the numbers. In the, in uh, the, anything in the wow. in the pipeline? Are you thinking e-bikes or? Um, there's stuff in the pipeline. E-bikes is not necessarily in the pipeline, um, but yeah, there's always stuff in the pipeline. Yeah. So we're kind of we've moved from doing a model year specific thing to kind of trying to be a bit more abstract oh. than that. Um, I hate so the it, model year. Thing. Yeah, it's really it. difficult for a manufacturer yeah. and, and to try to, you know, you've got partners yeah, all over the world. It always seems so pointless because it's, it's like, oh, I've got, a, you know, in 2018, I've got a 2019 bike, but it's only September. How can, and it's the same with motorbikes, isn't it? The same thing. Yeah. And Why I'm thinking about 2020. From January and, the 1st, this is the 2020 bike, you know. Yeah, and especially, you know, if you think about these bikes and you're working off of a, you know, two to a four year, you know, product life cycle, life cycle for each bike, you know, it's like, how do you keep fresh and how do you stagger it? And having a model year and something fresh every year to keep people interested is really tough. So yeah, it, it yeah. sometimes just comes more down to the spec of what you're putting on the bikes and the colors, I hate to say it, but yeah, bold new colors right. kind yeah. of can become a thing. And so if you're doing a whole model year and it's just a bold new color, maybe that's not so attractive. So trying to not do model years and make somebody who bought the bike, you know, last week and then yeah. a new color comes out, make them not feel bad, you know. So it's finally, kind of we've had all this beautiful hot weather over here, 30 <laughs> plus degrees, the hottest, second hottest day ever, two days ago, and you got here and it's raining. How does that feel? Well, you know, I feel like it's a good welcome because this is kind of how it is at home. Yeah. You know, a lot of, I mean, it's not right now like this at Where home. Where about but, are you from back home? So we're in Bellingham, like Pacific Northwest, okay. you know, Washington State, up, yeah. in the, up in the little top little corner there, right close to Canada. So coastal, we get, I always say like, we're kind of the same weather as the UK, right? Like, so this is, feels quite normal. I don't know. Bird Bikes, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm, um, I'm Dan. So uh, I'm the engineering director from yep. Bird. So um, I designed the bikes really and ride them. And, and how long's Bird been going now? 
We started the company in 2013. Yeah. Um, started selling our first bikes in like 2014. And yeah. Then kind of adding bikes to the range ever since then. So uh, we've got two hardtails, uh, three full sussies yeah. in the range, and we're always adding new stuff too. And you are UK based, obviously. Yep, UK based. Uh, do all the design here. Frames are fabricated in Taiwan. Uh, we assemble every bike to order from our factory in Hampshire. Yeah. Customers go on a website, they choose all the parts on the bikes, so they're all custom built, but at a factory direct price. And I remember when you had the 650, the AM, just remind me of the model name. So the one you rode, the, yeah. the full source was the uh, Ares 145. That's right, yeah, yeah. That's had a few updates since then. So with, now it's we've got the Ares AM 160, yeah. 160 front and rear specific. Yeah. Uh, it's got a bit more tyre clearance, uh, just neatened up a bit. But yeah, it, it's a real sort of downhill enduro smasher. Then we've got the Ares AM9 as well, which is a 29er, 150 mil travel front and rear. Um, and that's our best-selling bike, really. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you see them everywhere now. So if you remember on that, I, I think I had the first one in the UK with Endura Mag. Yeah, you did. And yeah. I had it for what a month, something yeah. like that. Yeah, and yeah. do you remember what I'd said to you? I did. I did. Yeah. It yeah. was if um, you did it in 29, I'd really like to have a go. Yeah. And you've done it, which is fantastic. <laughs> so it's nice to see that you know. I mean. I think nowadays you've got to do a 29 right? yeah. yeah and we yeah. always like to listen to feedback from testers or whether it's a you know customers or professional testers yeah um, we always like to take that on board and because we're a small company we can move quickly with yeah. model revisions and bringing out new models so we can test stuff and um, we're always evolving and, and coming up with new ideas and you were you were really you were really early on the obviously people jump on the long low slack but that was when was that? Was that 2014, 2015 maybe? Yeah, I mean the... That's 500 uh, reach on a large, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah 504 reach yeah. on a large on the bike you tested. And then our, yeah, our biggest one goes up to like 525 yeah. reach on the XL. Um, yeah, it, just, it was something that just made sense for us. Yeah. We, we wanted to uh, sleep in the seat juice to put your weight in a sort of more neutral position. Yeah. As a byproduct of that, the, the reaches grew. Um, and then when we, you know, when we tested it on the trails, it felt great. So I think I think the steep in the steep seat angle is something that you see some of these big American brands. They've got beautiful looking bikes, and then you look at you look at it from the side. And, and to me, if the seat angle matches the head angle. I instantly put off by it because you know it'll be horrendous up the hills. I do get that. It, it, whenever I'll, I'll sort of might swap bikes with someone, I, I, I feel like I'm sat almost over the rear axle yeah. now, and, and it's I've trying to wheelie on the steep stuff. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, we're just like riding and designing what we what we like and what feels yeah. good to us. So and a good day for you here at Land Eglis. Yeah, great. I mean, despite the weather, we've had loads of demos out. Um, I always had sort of five or six bikes out at any one time. You can see, there's not many bikes here. Yeah, uh, they're all out on demo. Brilliant. And, yeah, third year here. Um, I just like the vibe. It's relaxed. It's not like at a race where everyone's kind of rushing yeah, about, stressing yeah. about the race run. People here, there's you know, there's free beer, there's food, barbecue, and lots of different brands. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just a nice vibe here. We're over at the Pipe Dream stand. I've never actually spoken to you guys before <laughs> about your bikes. Do you want yeah, to yeah. tell us a bit about them? Yeah. So uh, hi, Mike from Pipe Dream here with the Gen 2 Moxie on the stand. Uh, what can we say about it? It's, we, we kind of took it over to Eurobike a few years back and uh, the world was definitely ready for a proper hardcore hardtail. Yeah. Uh, long, low and slack. We do it two sizes, long and longer. And people are like, long and longer, how does that work? Yeah. And uh, it just seems to put you in the right place when you're going uphill and more importantly, downhill as well. And uh, yeah, we're at Meetup again. Fantastic event. Love to support it. Love the ethos here. And uh, love the people come, just coming around and stroking and sniffing the bikes, and uh, it really works. So. so, so these obviously you are long, low, slack, like yeah. you say. So, if we go for the longer one, what we're we talking reach? So, longer is 510 reach, uh, the wow. long is 470. So, if you compare yeah. that against other yeah, mainstream yeah. brands, you're looking at sort of the large and XL size yeah. to get that level yeah. of reach. But we maintain a low standover height with a single size rear triangle, and we've got riders from five foot four to six foot four plus on these two size bikes. Yeah. All it is is put the right size dropper in and you are away. And what's, um, they look like they've got a really nice short head tube as well. Is that like yeah. 100 mil or even uh, less? It's, yeah, I think it is just under, I could check the docks and yeah. we'll measure it in a minute, but yeah. Back it's, end? What's back the back end, end on it? Oh, you're asking all the wrong <laughs> questions. But I will say is on the Gen 2, we've just extended it by 10 mil, which gives us a 29 by 2.5 clearance in the yeah. rear triangle. So you get the big tires in. Big tires in there, yeah. but it's got sliding dropouts, so you can go single speed if you really want to. 
uh, 27.5 non plus size if you want to go down there as well or anything up to they say 29 by 2.5 and um, uh, what are, what are the prices on these bikes so there... we've got the vivid colors are 639 we've yeah. got the teal the beautiful color in 629 and then the prismatic rainbow in 649 okay and yeah. then we are also having the toys and the thoughts of doing the uh, gen 2 in titanium but that's going to be proper saucy nice. but uh yeah watch this space for that one when we uh start looking at bundles right then guys that's it it's a day over for us at the mtb meetup i hope you like this vlog i hope you like all the products that were mentioned in it don't forget buicor these are the guys these are our uh channel sponsors for the live show uh any comments on any of these products put them in and don't forget to have a look at our products and just after a nice little ride in the rain it looks like the sun's coming out thanks for watching keep it pinned <laughs>